Good evening. Today is Tuesday, February 16th, 2021. I am Heather Pepley, clerk for the City of Manistee. The City Council's February 16th, 2021 regular meeting being conducted remotely where all members of the City Council are in separate locations and not at the City Hall Council Chambers will be called to order by Mayor Roger Zielinski shortly. As always, this meeting is being recorded and will be broadcast on Manistee TV cable channels 189 and 190 and available at manistee.tv.org. City Council and City staff will have video and audio available for this meeting. Members of the public will be audio only. The microphones of all members of the City Council, City Manager, City Attorney, and City Clerk will always be live unless there's an audio disruption. Mayor Zielinski, we are ready to proceed with the meeting. Thank you, Heather. We'll call the meeting to order. Please take the roll. Council Member Bachman. I am unmuted in here. Councilmember Beaton. Here. Mayor Zielinski. Here. Councilmember Sipsik. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Shemansky. Here. Councilmember Grabowski. Here. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Here. City Manager. Here. City Attorney. Here. Deputy Clerk. Here. City Assessor. Here. Finance Director. Here. Planning and Zoning Director. Here. Police Chief. Here. Fire Chief. Here. City Engineer. Here. Mayor, that's uh, roll call is complete. Thank you. <clears throat> this is an opportunity to, for citizens to comment on agenda-related items. Each person waiting in the virtual waiting room will be called individually by the city clerk by the last four digits of their telephone number. Individuals will be asked if they have a comment or if they are passing. It's very important that those giving comments have a good phone connection and no sound or noise or no sound or noise in the background, such as televisions. Audio should be muted. Otherwise, there will be a disruptive audio. If this issue cannot be corrected by the caller, we'll, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll move on to the next person in line. The meeting discussion topics for those who don't have an agenda are on the consent agenda, approval of minutes, payroll, invoices, notification regarding next work session, other agenda items, consideration of engaging with the Michigan Municipal League to conduct a recruitment, recruitment process to identify the next city manager. Consideration of a resolution to authorize voting system grant agreement. Consideration of amendments to the Manistee City Ordinance Chapter 650, and I blight. <coughs> Consideration of authorizing to pursue the 2021 FEMA Fire Department grant for 12 self-contained breathing apparatuses for the Manistee Fire Department. Consideration of compensation Commission recommendation for council salary, a report from Republic Services, and consideration of planning and zoning enforcement. Heather? Oh, we'll now take uh, public comments. Heather? And at this time, I don't see any members of the public uh, with us. Okay, we'll move right along. Consent agenda. <clears throat> All items marked with an asterisk are on the consent agenda considered by the city manager to be routine matters. Prior to the approval of the consent agenda, any member of council may have an item, <clears throat> excuse me, from the consent agenda removed and taken up during the regular portion of the meeting. Consent agenda items include approval of minutes, payroll, invoices, notification regarding next work session. At this time, council could take action to approve the consent agenda as presented. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion, Grabowski. I'll second. Anybody want anything removed? Hearing none, please take the roll. Councilmember Bachman? Yes. Councilmember Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Councilmember Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Councilmember Grabowski? Yes. Councilmember Martin Pontiac. Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. 
Unfinished business, we have none. New business, consideration of engaging with the Michigan Municipal League to conduct a recruitment process to identify the next city manager. The Michigan Municipal League, through their executive ser services, assist communities with the recruitment process to identify the next city manager, their next city manager. The MML is willing to assist the city in this process. The cost of their assistance is $17,000. At this time, council could take action to approve contracting with MML in the amount of $17,000 to assist the city in a recruitment process to identify the next city manager and authorize the mayor and city clerk to sign the necessary documents. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion, Bachman. Your best be a second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? Yes. Um, if you could just walk us through the difference between the enhanced version and, and this version that you've selected for us to vote on. Um, if you go to the executive search service overview, I think that's probably going to give you the best um, answer to that. Uh, the typical services are listed out for 17,000 and you can go to an enhanced uh, service. You get up to five personal visits with the search facilitator community roundtable uh, during the profile process, open house during interview process. Um, and that rate, that would get you another 19,000. And then you can go down from the uh, typical and uh, you just lose a few things and you save $3,000. Um, you know, I, I looked at the, um, the next step up, the enhanced, I just don't know, in the, you know, in the, in the day and age of COVID, you know, how it would go with, you know, the community meeting a candidate over Zoom or Teams. I just didn't think that was too appropriate, and I didn't think it was necessary, you know, to add some additional things um, such as that because of the constraints we had with COVID. And and I just I don't know that we'll be there in May or June to have. Uh, in-person meetings of those sizes. I guess my, my concern is, I remember the process that we went through uh, to find you. Um, even though I wasn't exactly on council at that time, I was very attentive at all the meetings. Um, I just wonder if, if we're gonna find the right candidate with five, if they're only gonna look at five or narrow it down to five. Well, the, yeah, I think you are uh, for, for, for a number of reasons. Number one, I think Manistee, just because of it being Manistee located where it is, uh, is a very desirable community to live and work in, I think, number one. Number two, with all the exciting projects that we have uh, going on at this time in the community, I think that's going to, somebody, someone is going to view that as very professionally rewarding. Um, also, uh, with the MML, they do a very good job of both passive and aggressive recruitment. Passive is just advertising in the normal spots. And then the aggressive is that, you know, with the contacts they have, uh, they know of, as an example, they know of managers that have left the state or have ties to the state and may want to come back. They might, uh, know, uh, of of managers that are currently employed, but are looking for something different. Um, so I, I think we'll be okay at the at that level. Mr. Taylor, correct me if I'm wrong, but they look at a lot more than five people or five candidates. They just, they present us with five and we can reject those five and move on, can't we? Exactly. You know, they'll, they'll look I, at anybody that, that applies. I got a quick question. So if we don't, find somebody with those five that they give us, do they keep helping us or do you have to pay again? I think they, my sense is they continue the search process. Now, I think there's a limit of the, uh, to their largesse. You know, if, you know, if you continually re reject five, they might add some uh, more onto that. Um, that, that's my guess. I haven't asked that specific question, but that's the way I would look at it. 
Okay. And is this like the standard for finding a city manager? Because I, I don't know. I don't know what they did the last few times. It's my understanding that the, the process that I'm recommending is virtually similar to you know, the same, very similar to what was done the last time. Okay. My memory serves me correct that this is the same way we did it last time. Yeah. And certainly, you know, I think that if during the process the council wants to alter it a bit and ask for something different, I think they, I'm sure they would do it at a, but, but there would be a price associated with it. Um, you know, one of the things I would suggest if council, you know, approves of using the MML, uh, I already spoke to the representatives and they're available next Tuesday. And I would suggest maybe we have a special meeting to answer some of these questions that I'm unable to answer at this time. And then also um, start, that would actually get the process started and uh, they'd be able to offer, you know, some scenarios of, you know, a, a timeline and different things like that. Can, can we ask questions to them like the next meeting before we decide on spending this money? Can we, well, can we do it that? Would be, it would be a, 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 a special meeting. So you, you would have authority to take action. And what I'm looking at tonight is, is just an approval with, to go with their typical search, start talking with them next week. And if you change your mind and you want to go up a step or down a step, you can certainly pivot at that time. But I think can we back out if we're not comfortable with that or, or no? It's, it's council's prerogative. Okay. This is Mick Demansky. Um, you know, my experience with, with hiring and working in civilian personnel offices is that uh, services like this are essential for communities like us. We don't have the expertise uh, to be able to, to go through the minefields that are out there. Uh, there is a lot of, of challenges when you're hiring somebody uh, at the level of the, a city manager. And uh, I, would, I would definitely um, propose that we go with uh, MML. Uh, it, it's just the, the question would be at what level? And from what I understand, the standard level is more than, than sufficient for our needs. That, that's also my understanding in talking yeah. with uh with a representative from MML. I, I have another question. Um, what are we gonna do about compensation? Are we going to just offer this opportunity out there at your current salary level or how does that work? Well, they'll work with us to come up with uh, an uh, ad and what we normally do is we give a salar salary range and we list the benefits and then uh, once council is selected the, uh, the candidate and that candidate is interested and then you would negotiate an employment agreement much like uh, was done with me. Is Any this, other questions? Yeah, I have a couple questions. Is this the same timeline and basically the same setup as last time when we were looking? Yes, I believe it is. Yeah. Because it's the same cost and everything? I didn't check to see if it was the same cost. If, if it, there's any difference, I would believe it to be minimal. Okay. This, this is the standard package that they've been using for a number of years, the same format. All right, I'm kind of, I would like to talk to them and ask questions before we vote to actually hire them. Okay. Is there anybody else with any questions or concerns? The compensation a... package and vacation time and all that, I think we need to think about. Um, I know that I believe you have five weeks, Mr. Taylor, and yes. um, I don't know if we'd want to start somebody out at five weeks. Um, I, I think we do. I think we do need to talk to the ML, MML representative and get a feel for how this is going to work. Yeah, we can so. do that. And again, um, a lot of these benefits are negotiable between the city and the candidate. And, you know, you can, I would suggest you start out with ranges. Like, you know, as an example, you're comfortable with offering a candidate between three and five 
weeks of vacation a year, a salary range between X and Y and those kind of things. Okay. Yep. And, and that's, that's pretty standard. Uh, my question is if we don't go with MML, what are the other viable alternatives for us to be able to recruit, retain an appropriate candidate for your position? I know of one other individual in the state that does it. Um, but I think, I don't think I know MML is head and shoulders above that individual. I just don't think there's anybody else that is uh, as experienced and as connected as MML. And, and this other candidate is an individual company. It's not a, a, not, a, 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 a not for profit organization for supporting community and municipalities, correct? Correct. But if, if council is interested in the concept of engaging with the MML and just wants to fine tune the level of service that they'll provide, I think, you know, if we could get a motion to that and then I can, I can uh, schedule the special meeting for next week. So could we make our motion to hire MML and, and not at a specific level? Yes. And then you can, you can um, say you're, you're going to engage with the MML for the executive search and then subject to determining at what level and that would be decided the following week, something like that. And, and then we would not have to go back to, to do this again uh, as far as um, approving as long no. as we approved it with those considerations. No, you wouldn't because you would, you would the way I envision it, if you uh, tonight uh, approve engaging with the league for the services, come back Tuesday, next Tuesday, have a special meeting. The league rep walks you through the process, talks about how it's going to work, timelines and things, and, and you decide um, on a level of service you want, then you can certainly, because it's a special meeting, make a motion to that effect, and then it's done with. So what, what would, what's the cost of the lowest level of their services? Do we have that dollar amount? It's either 17 or, or not 17, 13,000. Let me get that. I think it's 14. Yeah. That's what it says in the packet. Yeah. 14. And what's the high end is 19? Well, they can go up to 23. If, 23. And on all the extras. So, so we could say uh, from 14, not to exceed $20,000. Certainly. Mr. Taylor, if we approve this tonight for 17,000, what I think I hear you saying is that can be adjusted Tuesday. We can change that amount Tuesday? Exactly. Well, that, that's why I'm saying is if we give a scale uh, between 14 and $20,000, then that way we're being um, completely open uh, to the public about what the, the limits are with our spending. So we wouldn't necessarily have to go back if we we're gonna increase by 2000 or decrease by 2000. That would be my suggestion. And I think that would be sufficient for tonight. And I think just, you know, in, in the uh, aspect of transparency, if next week you decide that the typical service is um, appropriate, you just make a motion that you're gonna go with the typical service at a cost of $17,000. And then you got it zeroed in. And, and if after that meeting, we are not satisfied with MML, then we, we just basically cancel where there's no loss, correct? You would, uh, I'd have to defer to the, the city attorney, but I think if you've approved an action, I think you would have to take another action to reverse that. Okay, got it. Mr. Can't we just can't we just move this till after we have a meeting with them and then decide what we want to do? I don't understand why we have to decide now and then have a meeting. Well, the meeting, I believe it, the intent of the meeting, in my mind, the second one was once the council has decided to go with MML at, at a specific um, price point, 
then they, that would the next meeting would actually kick off the process. You would get to meet at least one of the uh, individuals that would be involved in the search, talk about in further detail their, their process and how they run it, what kind of timeline, and be able to ask questions such as you have tonight of, you know, how many, is there a limit of, on the number of candidates that you can, uh, that you'll present to us? As an example, if we, you give us five, we don't like them. Are you still going to be able to give us another five? You know? Well, I, I understand that. I just, I feel like we're doing this backwards. Like, well, I feel like we should meet with them first and then decide what package we want to do if yeah. we want to do one. Yeah, it's council's choice. Um, however you want to approve it or approach it. Mr. Taylor, if, um, or Ms. maybe Mr. Saylor, if we uh, had a motion to table this tonight and bring it up at the next meeting and meet with MML, would that work? Sure, and at the next meeting, you could either go with the motion that is currently on the floor or amend that motion if you wanted a different level of service from MML from the $17,000 service. Is council, anybody in council want to table this? I think that we should table it and have a special meeting on Tuesday and then bring it up at our March 1st or the first week of March, whatever that date is. Is there a second? I'll second, second Rubowski. Now, just so I understand, and Heather probably too, are you tabling this to the special meeting? Yes, to the special meeting, right? Which is yes. not the first meeting of March, but it was is next week's meeting. Next week. Yes. Mm -hmm. Everybody clear? Yes. Any other discussion? Here. Please take the room. I'm sorry, who seconded that? That was Council Member Sipsick that made the motion? Yes. And who seconded it? Aaron. I'll Rubowski. second it. Thank you. Council Member Bachman? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Council Member Sipsick? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of a resolution to authorize voting system grant agreement. Council approved the purchase of an additional voting tabulator for the processing of absentee ballots on January 21st, 2020. The clerk received notification from the state that partial funding was available for voting system purchases occurring between January 20th, 2020 and August 31st, 2020. <clears throat> Through the, a combination of a federal HAVA CARE Act and state appropriated, appropriated funds, appropriated funds. The city paid for half the cost of the new tabulator and the other half has been billed to the state for, this, for the state to pay their portion. A grant agreement must be signed. <clears throat> At this time, council could take action to adopt a resolution authorizing the clerk to submit a voting system grant agreement on behalf of the city of Manistee for partial funding of a new voting tabulator purchased last year. Contingent upon the review of the agreement by the city attorney and further authorize the mayor and clerk to sign the resolution. Is there a motion? I'll, I'll, make make a I'll make a motion. Did you get that, Laura? Yes, I did. Thank you. Any discussion? Questions? Just so I'm clear on um, the basic <coughs> information where it says grand total, $5,295. Is Does that represent the half that you're going for, or is that the total amount? That was the total amount of the tabulator minus uh, the shipping was not included on that. So the shipping okay. was our responsibility, but they um, are paying half of that. Um, and when I first asked for council's approval to purchase this, at that time, we didn't, um, we weren't approved for the grant. And right. then after we had it approved, after you approved, then they came back and offered, they had more funding. So they offered it up to more people. So, okay. yep. Thanks. So way to go to come up with another 2,500 bucks for the coffers. Every little bit helps. It does, absolutely. 
Anything else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Council Member Gabowski? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Zelinski? Yes. Council <laughs> Member Keaton? Yes. Council Member Bachman? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of amendment to the Manistee City Ordinance Chapter 650 Anti Blight. Um, amendments have been made by the City Attorney to Ordinance Chapter 650 Anti Blight. These changes will allow for more efficient enforcement of the ordinance by the police department. At this, as an ordinance, two separate readings are required. If this ordinance is introduced at this time, it could be adopted at the next meeting. At this time, council could take action to introduce the proposed amendment to Manistee, County, Manistee City Ordinance Chapter 650 and I believe. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion. Make sure I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Well, you know, I got a question. <laughs> We're waiting for um, it. <laughs> so they took it out to make everything easier for you guys to uh, do the blight. I'm sorry. I got a puppy that's driving me insane. Um, <clears throat> and there's another blight committee, I guess. There's an ad hoc blight committee. It's okay. An ad hoc advisory blight committee. So is is that going to help you or the ad hoc committee or the yeah ordinance? the the committee? Yeah, we've been meeting and and I think one of the the main things the ad hoc committee is going to provide is is trying to identify additional resources such as United Way or Habitat for Humanity for just to provide resources for those people who can't afford to to make the corrections. We as a police department will enforce the ordinance. We can write tickets, but I'd like to also work it from a couple of different angles. We can actually provide additional services to members of our public, as well as working with um, you know, safe build from that angle. So I think in order to really have a, a true impact on blight, you gotta kind of hit it from a different, three different angles. Okay, I just got, I've got one more question then I'll be done. Is it gonna make you, clean up the blight a little faster because I feel like at the rate we're going, I'm going to be 110 before we see any type of, <laughs> you know, changes. So what this ordinance and changes do, it allows us to get to enforcement quicker. As we've discussed before, officers make contact, they advise, then they have to provide written notice. And it allows us to get to the actual enforcement sooner, meaning writing tickets sooner and hopefully coming up with resources the blight ad hoc committee that that will help get things cleaned up much quicker. So, you know, this summer having more officers working more hours as opposed to working a COVID schedule, I anticipate having a, a uh, much larger impact on blight. Okay, I lied. I have one more question. So, I, I was reading. I was reading. I actually read through this whole thing. Um, the the houses that are not habitat by anybody that are you know boarded up closed up is there a time like can they just sit there for you know 50 years or is there something that, to where they they have to do something with them it just can't sit vacant for you know the next 25 years well it, it depends on if, it, if it's a violation of ordinance or a violation of um, michigan blighted area rehabilitation and maybe i should afford to uh, defer to george sailor in terms well, of I, I guess I would answer that by saying that uh, vacant alone does not constitute blight. Uh, but if vacant along with uh, there's no paint on the structure, uh, there's holes in the roof, the, the structure's not properly waterproofed, uh, it's not habitable as a house, those kinds of factors uh, fit then the definition of what is considered a blighted structure and would give us the authority to pursue that under the ordinance. Okay. Okay, I'm done this time, see, easy. Anybody else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Council Member Bachman? Yes. <clears throat> Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Council Member Gabowski? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. 
Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of authorizing to pursue the 2021 FEMA FD grant for the uh, for 12 self-contained breathing apparatuses for the Manistee Fire Department. The City of Manistee the City of Manistee Fire Department is pursuing the FEMA FD grant for the purchase of 12 new self-contained breathing apparatuses to replace the current outdated air packs to the current standards. At this time, Council can take action to authorize the Manistee Fire Department to pursue the 2021 FEMA FD grant for new SCBAs. Mm. Is there a motion? I'll make that motion, Bachman. I'll second. I'll second it, Grubeski. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion or questions? I have a question. Why 12? I mean, there's seven people on the fire in the fire department. <laughs> I just want to know why 12, that's well, all. We actually cut it down from our last year's um, trial because the NFPA looks at it per seat of trucks. We currently carry 13 air packs right now. Um, one of them being a very outdated one, um, but that's how they go about is finding it by seats on the truck. Um, currently, like you said, we have uh, seven staff along with four other uh, police officers that are crossed. Um, so we don't quite utilize all of them, but that is going by a seats on a truck. We actually tried cutting that down for how many seats we actually do have. Well, if something's out of service too, you need extra one, right, Mark? It does help. Yes, we'll have if there's something that a pack goes out. Hopefully, if we have new ones, it'll be a long time before that happens. But but it happens. Our current status, uh, we're we're taking packs out and switching them out quite often. Okay, I was just curious. Thanks, Chief. Well, this is Nick Shemansky. Um, is there any budget for replacing these packs currently in our in your budget? Currently, no. Uh, we've kind of gone by and we've tried to go for these grants. Um, we tried last year, we did a combination grant with the two townships. Um, I think it was unsuccessful because the other stations had slightly newer packs. Um, you have to go through a, two phases or two editions of the pack. We're currently running on a 2007 edition and technically we'll, we should have pretty good chance of success this round because we're, we're past the 2018 edition, we'll totally be out of it by the 23 edition. At that time, our packs will be beyond their NFPA service. Like they still function, they still operate. We have a lot of issues with them, especially with our communications that are on them. But um, that's, that's, I guess, is if that answers your question. Yeah. Mark, what's our yeah. match on that grant? Currently, we have a 10% match. Uh, we have a gentleman that does a, a writing up for it. We supply him with a little bit of information and he puts it all together. Our match will be a 10%. Um, so we'll be looking at around the, about the 10,000 range, just slightly under, depending on where that actual price comes back in at. Any other questions? Is, is there a resale for this equipment once, uh, once we acquire new? Not usually. The last time we did this was back in 2011, 2012, I think. Chief Bachman was in there at that time. Uh, the packs at that point are, the, the actual company that builds the packs that we currently have no longer produces fire service air packs. They still will give us parts, but they're uh, currently out of business in the fire service. They are still in to hazardous materials and industrial, but they, their ratings did not pass the NFPA specs, so they dropped that line. Of course, anything that doesn't pass NFPA can't go to any other fire service. It just has to be taken out of service. Correct. correct. Anybody else? Hearing none, please take the roll. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Council Member Grabowski? Yes. Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Council Member Bachman? Yes. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Consideration of Compensation Commission recommendation for council salaries. 
Compensation for the mayor and members of city councils established based on procedures in the in the chapter in the charter, state statute, and local ordinance. A fundamental point in these requirements is that the mayor and council may not approve changes in their own level of compensation. Any change in the compensation must take effect after the terms of all current council members have expired. Under established procedures, city council may not develop compensation rates, even though the rates do not become effective during the term of the city council. Rates are developed by an independent compensation commission, which only meets every other year. The council may reject or accept the compensation commission recommendations. They may not be modified. If the council rejects a recommendation, they are returned to the compensation commission for further consideration. Rejection can only occur if the majority of council, five members, vote to reject. The recommendation, if the recommendations are accepted, they will be implemented at the beginning of the year 2023 after all current council terms have expired. The current salary for the mayor and city council are $4,774 and $3,713 per year, respectively. These rates have been in effect since January 2009. The Compensation Commission recognizes the importance of city council and they acknowledge the commitments required for its members. Therefore, the commission the Compensation Commission is recommending that these amounts be increased to 5,000 for the mayor and 3,875 for council. At this time, council get to action to either accept or reject the Compensation Commission recommendations. Is there a motion to either accept or reject? I would make a motion to reject it. I don't know why we, why, why we need to up it. I mean, it hasn't been the same since 2009. Shemansky, I will second that. Um, Mayor, if I can just um, say when I, we, I met, I am the staff liaison for this commission and I met with uh, the members and their only thing they said that, you know, without having an increase since 2009, they were hoping, they said not that they want, um, you know, compensation to be the reason that somebody runs for council, but they also want it to, you know, they were hoping that maybe it would draw a little bit of attention. They said it was kind of that double-edged sword. You know, they want um, mm -hmm. to have people interested in council um, and interested in running, but that was just, and they said without having an increase since 2009, they wanted to throw it out there. And I don't know if you remember from last time, but um, for those of you that are on, this is the same amount that they, um, suggested last time too. So they just brought it back. Thank you, Heather. We have a motion in a second to reject the Compensation Commission. Is there any, any comments from council members? Any suggestions, concerns? Well, they, we make another they, motion to accept it at the same time. We have to go through the first one. Mr. Saylor? Your mic's not if the motion to reject uh, does not pass by a two-thirds majority, you don't have to go any further. Really, uh, you don't have to have a motion to accept. If you take no action, then the Compensation Commission's uh, recommendation is deemed accepted. So you. after you vote on this motion, if you don't have five votes in favor, uh, you don't even need a motion to accept. Uh, just taking no action results in acceptance. I appreciate Heather's comments on why they made this recommendation. I, I can't argue with that. It's been a long time since they've done it. And I certainly didn't jump in it for the cash, but uh, I, I understand the logic. And so I will vote to reject that motion personally. Well, you know, interesting, this is Mick. Uh, you know, I never thought about that, but you know, the last election, nobody ran against anyone. Like we, we couldn't, you know, as hard as I tried, I couldn't find anyone in the fifth district to run. Uh, other than myself, uh, and I'm, I'm guessing that it was probably similar across the city, which is, you know, sad, just to, to be honest. Um, I'm not sure that 
the money, you know, 150 or whatever, the, the small amount of, of difference would make a difference in somebody wanting to, to become involved in, in city politics. But, um, you know, whatever we can do to encourage people to get more involved. Uh, I, I honestly, I didn't know there was a compensation when I ran for city council. So I was real surprised when there was a check in the mail. So uh, go figure. Uh, I but, actually didn't know either till I was filling out paperwork after I was already, you know, on council. So I, I yeah, I don't think there needs to be a. Yeah. And, and I think timing is obviously not the best. Again, we're in a, we're in a pandemic. We have a lot of people that are unemployed uh, and voting for a raise for us is kind of the same as, you know, the I turns when, when Congress votes for a, giving themselves a raise. So, um, but, it, but it was an interesting point, Heather, that you made that, that they brought up the fact that, um, you know, there hasn't been any kind of compensation and, and maybe it would encourage somebody. Uh, I'm not sure that $150 more a year would be the, a big spark, but uh, I, I get, I get the, the, the concept. I agree. And I told them that I would at least voice their, um, you know, yep. their concerns with you. So anybody else? So we have a motion to reject. We have a second. If there's no other comments, please take the roll. Council Member Grabowski? No. Council Member Martin Pontiac? Yes. Council Member Bachman? No. Council Member Beaton? Yes. Mayor Zielinski? Yes. Council Member Sipsik? Yes. <clears throat> Mayor Pro Tem Schmansky? Yes. Motion passed. Thank you. Right. Notice communications and announcements. Tonight we have um, Republic Services and we have the Planning and Zoning Enforcement. Um, yeah. Matt, you're up. Mr. Mayor, members of the Council City staff, thank you very much for having a little bit of time to see me this evening for our annual report. You should see a slide on your screen currently, is that correct? Yes. Awesome, thank you very much. Uh, I again appreciate the time. Uh, I'll make this brief as I always do and just kind of roll through some information for you and have a little bit of questions and answer at the end. If there's something that you wish for me to stop on at any point in time, please just say so and we'll pause and, and direct it at that point. Um, Republic Services, as you know, is a community partner here in Manistee. Uh, our landfill and hauling operations just down the road in Stronach Township. Uh, we are uh, heavily involved in the community, uh, both in terms of where our men and women live and in terms of where we uh, utilize what we pay them and back to the community. Um, the municipal contract uh, we extended on July 1 of this past year, it expires in June of 2025. It's a 60 month term and we collect trash on Monday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday within the city. Um, recycling collection, you city council uh, allowed my recommendation to make that go away last year due to low participation. We had less than 150 people participating out of the city, uh, which made it very cost prohibited to continue to offer that. Additionally, last year, the drop site moved um, from over by the DPW over to the MCC parking lot utilizing the PAC fiber trailer, which uh, resulted in a significant budget uh, reduction for you guys, uh, but also uh, allowed PAC to continue their strong partnership in the community. So it was kind of a win-win for everybody with that change. Um, we did have the ad hoc refuse uh, committee and members of council that were on that. Uh, that ended last year in 2012 when we did the two recommendations, the carting for all of the residential and that deployment changed this past July. Uh, I gotta tell you, I haven't heard anything good, bad or otherwise in the last few months. Um, so all of the noise around that change, like we always have when we do a change has <laughs> slowed down uh, and everyone seems to be happy with it. Um, we'll talk about some numbers that go into that here pretty soon. The DDA corrals that just kicked off last week. 
Uh, we did our last uh, curbside pickup on Thursday. And as of Monday or as of last week, Thursday, those dumpsters were open and available for the DDA. Uh, looking at just some rough numbers, if you look at the January 2021 numbers versus January of 2019, you'll see the change in the curbside program. Uh, the nice part of that uh, was a lift in um, accountability at the city level. We were able to report an additional 115 totes um, and we're able to get that billing corrected within the city and, and get that revenue coming in to justify those services that those residents have. So right now we've got 642 homeowners that are participating in that bag program and 2,359 people that are participating in the totes. So that's a, a nice change and it's about where we projected it when we brought this to council from the committee. If you look at your tons year over year, you'll see a, a ton jump last year. Um, and that ton jump is a direct result really of COVID. Um, I'm trying to get one of my other screens here to open up. So in 2020 versus 2019, the tons for the same comparable time frame within the residential collection went up 181 tons of material. Um, if you look at that based on what a garbage truck is, and a garbage truck's about eight tons of material, that 181 tons represented 22 additional truckloads of material that came out of the city last year that didn't come out of the year before, um, closely all tied to COVID. Um, that uh, directly results in a budget impact for the city of about $8,500 in additional disposal costs, but it also directly uh, took into an unbudgeted account on something that wasn't compensated back to Republic about 21K. So the, the COVID timeframe had a dramatic impact on both the city and Republic in terms of extra material. And I just wanted to share those numbers with you just so you had a, a kind of a, a touch point on what that 181 tons really meant in terms of dollars and cents. Um, this is Mick Shemansky. Can I, can I ask a question? Absolutely. Uh, how much of this might be attributed to the fact that we are no longer recycling glass and that glass is now going into the community? Um, again, I, I don't know if you had any previous data on how much glass was being recycled, but I'm assuming that they may be part of the very large um, jump, but I have no data to confirm that. Yeah, that COVID numbers, we saw that across the country. Um, so it's not unique to, to this geographical area or, or unique to someone who has glass or not glass. Um, if you poked your head into the recycle containers, the single stream recycle containers over at MCC, you'll see a, a lot of glass that still goes in there. Um, you know, a lot of people just don't pay attention to the rules that are posted or the guidelines. So they assume it's recyclable and, and they still put it in there. Um, you know, I don't think that that 181 tons was a direct reflection of the glass. You could tie a little bit to it if you wanted to, but I think the vast majority is truly that COVID impact of kids not being in school, people not being at work, more people at home, more food being prepared at home as the restaurants weren't available. All of those things that traditionally were in the commercial dumpsters around the community really pulled back into the households. So, okay, so, so just as a, you know, a, a data point, uh, how much glass was recycled in 2017, for example, when you were still recycling glass from NC? So the glass is not broken out as an individual weight within the way that your uh, recycling is collected. Okay. So the, the interesting part, uh, Mr. Skmansky, about recycling is as the as the manufacturers get better and better on designing their packaging, it's what's called what lightweighting. And we've talked about this before. So the plastic water bottle, for example, the plastic water bottle has decreased in the amount of plastic in it by 20 fold in the last 10 years. So it takes, you know, 20 times more water bottles to create the same ton of material in terms of number of water bottles as it did, you know, 10 years prior. So that light weighting also makes it hard to really look at recycle weights year over year. 
This year we saw a dramatic influx in fiber um, with all of the packagings that were being shipped through all of the, you know, the Amazons and, and that type of uh, online purchasing. So that was the big increase this year. Um, but these are the numbers that, that I have for you this evening. Thank you. You're very welcome. If we pop into the next one, we do do a spring event every year. Last year we did postpone it because of COVID. This year, that same event that we scheduled last year will reappear and that's a shredded event for the community. We're going to place two shredding trucks at um, the Youth Armory building. Um, and that's gonna serve as any resident within the city of Holland who's purged out some of those bills over the last year or those old tax records or whatever that information is that they want securely gone um, that uh, didn't use it for starting a fire per se or, or other ways. So that's the event um, that uh, we've chosen um, with city staff to bring back this year. That's gonna be on May 15th from eight to 11.30 a.m. Um, and that's always a, a well-received event, uh, those spring events uh, with a, a good turnout somewhere between two and 500 cars. Um, the new DDA dumpster program, as we talked about before, has launched. Um, this is a picture from last week, Thursday in the top uh, left-hand corner. Um, and that's not gonna happen anymore on River Street. So that's part of what the DDA's charge was. Um, to take those piles of two yards that were set out the night before um, and get those off the street. So when residents and snowplow crews and everyone else are walking through downtown, that those aren't things. So this, this benefits not only the stores and the restaurants, but it's a great benefit for the residents of our downtown and our visitors as well. So, and then just some future thoughts for you, you know, we'll continue to monitor those new programs. We're looking at additional sites to add dumpsters as new businesses arrive. Um, we're continuing to discuss improvements to the recycle programs. And I'm always here to hear any suggestions or questions from council. And with that, I come to a close. Barely 10 minutes after I started, I hope that was quick enough for you guys tonight. I do have a question. Yes, ma'am. The very first slide that you presented Mm -hmm. from June 2018 to July of 2019. Is there any way you can give this to give us the same information but on a calendar year basis? Like uh, compare all of 2019 to 2020? I can, yep. The original uh, slide deck was set up on the contract year and so that's how it's just always been but I can definitely change that to year to date numbers. I think it would kind of make a little more sense considering what we know happened in 2020, so. Mm -hmm. That would help. Absolutely. Anybody else? Yeah, I have a question. Um, just thinking about blight and um, different resources, have we thought about having a different program for maybe having like a discount for anybody that could rent a dumpster that's trying to clean up their house? Um, I know I've tried running a dumpster and I can barely afford it. So it's kind of like someone's trying to clean up a house and they can't really afford a dumpster. So is there a way we can help them out or some, have some kind of program? That's an interesting idea. I can pursue it with city staff and see what we can come back to the council with. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Uh, just a comment. This is Mick Shemansky. Uh, mm -hmm. I am always impressed with the quality of customer service uh, from your employees uh, that do the trash collection in Manistee. Uh, I am, you know, more than once uh, have seen them go above and beyond to assist uh, in a number of different ways. Uh, and I don't want to put anyone in, in, in maybe get somebody in trouble for doing stuff, but, but your people really are an integral part of the community. And, and they are, you know, again, I'm uh, very pleased with the, the quality of, of service that they deliver while they're making their routes. Thank you for that. Uh, this is where we live, work and play, and we want it to be just as nice as you guys do. 
like to echo that, Mick. You guys, your company does a great job. The guy who does my stuff is awesome, and, and yep. I think I'm his friend. So good job. Thank you for your work. Anybody else? As usual, Matt, thank you for your time. Thank you for your presentation. It's enlightening. Um, keep up the good work. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and members of the council. Next, consideration of planning and zoning enforcement. A packet of a yearly review of enforcement violations conducted by the planning and zoning department, HDC actions, planning commission action, and ZBA action carried out in 2020. This update is required to be presented to city council for the Michigan Planning Enabling Act. No action is required on this item. Mike, are you handling that tonight? Um, I'm actually uh, here with uh, Zach Samples. Uh, he been he has been acting as your zoning administrator. While I've uh, been you know working to uh, facilitate the department since Rob's departure. Um, I'm going to let him open it up here, and then uh, but I will chime in occasionally with it. So um, go ahead, Zach. Good evening, guys. Um, like Mike said, I'm Zach. I'm, I'm the new planner here in the city and the, in the county as well. So I'm just going to kind of outline here what we're going through with the zoning enforcement, the HDC, the planning commission, um, the ZBA. This is all requirements for, like it says, for the Planning Enabling Act, but it's also a requirement for the RRC certification. So we're kind of killing two birds with one stone here. So on, on the first one there, that's the enforcement stuff that's that's you, Mike, there you got? Yep, so uh, just to quickly uh, bring you guys through it, um, I don't wanna waste a lot of time on it, but um, so we had a busy year with enforcement, uh, you know, with in between developing a baseline for the short-term rental, uh, as well as um, the dumpster ordinance uh, in enforcement on that, that is uh, gonna start on June 1st, 2022. Um, you know, sending out that mailing as well as uh, working with the HDC on their um, re recommendation of enforced blight on 411, 347 and 349 River Street. Um, we've also identified and worked with the uh, city police department, written complaints from residents and property owners within the city of Manistee uh, to resolve issues. Um, and we haven't had to issue out or recommend issuing out a municipal ticket. So we're, we're kind of happy with that, you know, trying to work with the residents to resolve these, uh, these, you know, zoning violations without having to go uh, that route. Um, you know, we've worked with uh, our special use permits um, to sit there and, and try to make sure that they are um, meeting those uh, criteria prior, prior, excuse me, prior to um, signing off on their business registrations that then go to Heather. Um, we work uh, to make sure that they're following all the requirements that, that they are before they can open up. Um, so, we did a lot of permit closeouts with the HDC, um, as well as, uh, you know, working again with city staff and, and Zach and myself have done that. So um, just a real quick on the enforcement guys. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll take them at this time. Anybody have any questions for Mike? Oh, you may be small, but you're mighty. Lots of accomplishments in the last uh, year. Right. Um, and I, I'll let that continue, and I appreciate that, guys. Uh, but um, I, I don't take all the credit for any of this. Uh, we are a team here, and um, Zach's a, a great planner, and I'll, I'll let him continue up with this. So. Thank you. So, so next up, we have the uh, year in review for the Historical District uh, Commission there. Um, I'll save reading each of the actions there in, in your packet, but it kind of outlines each of the actions and kind of the, mo the major motions of the, of the permits and, and things like that that came through the HDC this year. Um, are there any questions on that before we move to the next one? Okay. So it's kind of the same thing again here. This one's for the planning commission. It's just a year in review of here's the major items that came through. Here's the here's the list of the actions and, and um, things like that. We've got amendments and everything else that went through there as well. So are there any are there any questions on that? 
Okay, last but not least, we've got the Zoning Board of Appeals. We've got their year in review for 2020. Again, it's another list of major items on the agenda that were on there and the actions for them. So if there are any questions on that, I can take those now as well. And with that, that's, that's all we had to present to you guys. Well, there is one other thing. We do have recommendations that are coming oh. in, guys. Um, you'll be seeing those as amendment requests or recommendations coming in a, a future pra uh, packet. So um, look forward to those. But within those, uh, there's you know recommended changes of temporary storage structures um, to outline uh, what the site plan review committee is as a requirement for the RRC. Um, amendments to patios uh, and fencing. Um, and then I think that was it, right, Zach? Oh, and uh, then design standards for um, for residential neighborhoods um, that are all going to be in future packets for your review. So I won't go into those too deeply tonight, but those are all requirements of the, uh, the Michigan and Planning and Enabling Act 125-3819. Um, and we just, uh, while we've already done this for the planning commission, um, it is a requirement to also um, give you guys an update as well. So, anybody have any questions for them? I just got a quick question for for Mike. Are you going to start working on the the sign ordinance too? So uh, the sign ordinance is somewhere we have looked at. Um, we we really need to identify it more as far as and narrow it down as far as what is needed to be looked at on there. Um, there's also uh, some interesting sign um, ordinances that are coming out of from like the city of Detroit um, and other areas that I kind of want to look at before we actively pursue something like that. It's it is also a large undertaking um, as we've talked about before um, and without guidance from uh, the planning commission on the areas that they really want or without us putting it up together a presentation um, that is that is more in tune of the communities that they want to mimic or um, ideas of that it, it's difficult to move forward um, so I, I think this is an agenda item on um, an upcoming planning commission uh, I will say that the and and you guys can kind of see this from your year review um, the planning commission meetings have been incredibly busy. Um, so uh, entering into um, a sign ordinance development within those meetings is, is, is a bit of an undertaking. Um, it might be something that we need to look at, you know, having a, a kind of a work session like you guys do for those kind of developments. Um, and that's something I can bring up to the planning commission to see if, if that's something that they would like to pursue. Okay. Anybody else? Mike and Zach, I'm really impressed with the way you laid this all out for us. It made really easy reading and understanding. You've had a busy year. Um, thanks for all your hard work. Thank you. Concerns and comments. Citizens comments. This is an opportunity for citizens to comment on municipal services, activities, or area of city involvement. Citizens that attend of the uh, phone shall be recognized by the city clerk for comments limited to five minutes. Letters submitted to council will not be publicly read. Every person in the virtual waiting room will be called by the last four digits of the telephone number. Heather, do you wanna do that and then move on to officials and staff and council members? Yes, I will. Uh, we had a couple members of public that joined during the meeting, but it looks like they have dropped off already. So there is no public comment. So I will move on to officials and staff. City manager? Nothing at this time. City attorney? Nothing, Heather, thank you. Finance director? Nothing, Heather, thank you very much. Police chief? I don't have anything, thanks, Heather. Fire chief? I just want to thank council for support on our FEMA uh, grant. Thank you much and uh, have a good night. City attorney? Uh, I'm sorry, city, you already said city engineer, excuse me. Nothing, Heather, thank you. Okay, sorry. Uh, assessor? Nothing, thank you. And planning and zoning? Nothing, Heather, thank you. All right. Council Member Bachman? Nothing, Heather, thank you. Council Member Beaton? 
Not at this time. Thank you. Council member Sipsick. Uh, I just got a quick question. Um, where are we with the equipment for the fire chief and uh, Josh for the vehicle equipment? I can answer that question. Um, we both made our orders last week. It should be two to three weeks before the equipment comes in and then we'll ship our vehicles to get it installed. So a month or so, what it sounds okay. like. Okay. I just wondering in case you guys didn't notice, I'm extremely impatient with things. <laughs> That's it. That's all I had. Council member Grabowski. Yes, I just like to uh, tell the guys that worked on the sewers the other night uh, in the cold and wind and snow, they did a good job. So I appreciate them out there working hard. Uh, also, uh, maybe for the mayor and city manager, do we ever think of lodging tax on those new apartments when they get built? A, a lodging ta tax on the apartment? Yeah, they have them up in Travers and that. The only lodging tax I've, I'm familiar with is, is for hotels, motels, and, and that goes to the Convention and Visitors Bureau. I don't know of one on just apartments or other. Well, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. I meant the, the apartments when they build the hotels and that. Oh. Oh, for the, for the proposed two new hotels? Right. Yeah, that would be, that would be under the uh, lodging tax. I, I think, I don't know if that's the correct term, but that is collected and given to the Convention and Visitors Bureau to uh, promote the area. Okay, good. Thank you. Councilmember Pontiac. Nothing at this time. Mayor Pro Tem Shemansky. Nothing at this time. Happy uh, Fat Tuesday. So go Mardi Gras. And Mayor Zelinsky. I have nothing. Um, thank you everybody for your time. I'll uh, take a motion to adjourn. I'll make, I'll make a motion. motion. Second. Second. We're adjourned. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Stay healthy.